The radio spectrum across the world is effectively managed so that as many users and systems can utilise it. Therefore, allocations are shoehorned in carefully to make the most out of the relatively limited space available. I get messages regularly from people who've bought scanners expecting to hear hit after hit of regular FM voice transmissions, but they're disappointed with all of the other strange and weird noises that seem to hog the bands. So I wanted to show you 10 of the common strange and wonderful signals you'll hear on your VHF and UHF radio scanner and put a name to some of them. This signal is Poxag and can be heard anywhere between 25 and 932 MHz depending on your country, but the majority are on VHF in the UK. The main users here are doctors and medical dispatch for the emergency services and alarm and security companies. Poxag is a protocol used to transmit data to pages. The name is an acronym of the Post Office Code Standardisation Advisory Group. It's named after the group that developed the code under the chairmanship of the British Post Office that used to operate most, if not all, of the telecommunications in Great Britain before privatisation. They are a really common signal, especially around VHF and UHF, and the transmitters run extremely high power to provide coverage across the UK, hence the name Wide Area Paging. The signals can be decoded quite easily, which makes interesting reading, and if you're not too far from a transmitter site, you'll even hear the signal without an antenna. MPT1327 is an industry standard for trunk radio communication networks. It was developed in 1988 by the British Department of Trade and Industry, or the DTI, and is primarily used in the UK and Europe, as well as some other countries. The system uses analogue audio on torch channels and can therefore be monitored by commercial scanners, but no scanner at this time can decode the control channel as far as I'm aware, so true trunk tracking is not supported. However, there are external applications that allow the monitoring of these trunk systems. Systems using MPT1327 generally consist of several radio channels. At least one of these channels is defined as the control channel and all other channels are traffic. Data messages between the mobiles and the network are exchanged on the control channel and each user in a network has a unique call number. The sound you heard there was the control channel and the voice channels can be listened to as their FM. Motor Turbo is a Motorola digital radio product marketed primarily to business and industrial users. The format is based on and compatible with the European two-slot DMR standard and uses TDMA or Time Division Multiple Access to effectively accommodate two simultaneous users. You can hear this in the amateur bands as well as commercial bands and various signals may consist of a control channel which transmits a burst a couple of times per second or speech. A digital scanner or SDR with the relevant software can be used to listen to these signals, but some of them are encrypted. DMR is more popular for many applications than analogue systems nowadays and is used by traffic wardens, security, shop watch systems and events to name just a few. One repeater can handle many users simultaneously on the same frequency, which allows for much better spectrum efficiency. Right in the middle of the 70cm amateur band, around 432 MHz, is a portion of the spectrum that is constantly active with all kinds of odd noises 24-7. The main users of this portion of the band are car keys. Remote keyless systems come as standard or as an option on 70% of cars made today, and they consist of a key fob transmitter and a receiver inside the vehicle. To work, they need a frequency, which is in 433 MHz in Europe, and 315 in the US and Japan. To meet the demand for remote keyless entry systems, Europe has also opened the 868 MHz band as well. When you press a button on your key fob, you're waking up its central processing unit inside. The CPU sends a data stream to the radio frequency transmitter. The keyless remote is actually a radio. This data stream contains command and, for security, rolling codes. 
The remote keyless systems receiver in the car captures the RF signal, extracts it and then sends the data stream to the CPU. The CPU decodes it and sends commands to the vehicle's command module. The sound you just heard there was police radio in the UK, more commonly known as Airwave. Airwave Solutions is a British mobile communications company that operates the Airwave network, the mobile communications network used by the UK's emergency services. The network is based on the Specialist Terrestrial Trunk Radio or TETRA specification. Airwave is just the name given to the emergency services system, but TETRA is in use by other organisations such as parking wardens, town wardens and security, as well as many more. Regular Tetra can be listened to on a digital scanner or SDR with the appropriate software. Now, these signals can be heard between 380 and 400 MHz for the emergency services and are densely packed in and regularly used, but as I've covered in previous videos, they cannot be decoded or listened to by any radio equipment out there unless you're actually a police officer. These signals can be found around 154 MHz as well as other areas which I won't cover, but they're commonly heard in the form of data streams. The source of these signals are portable traffic lights, the battery or generator powered temporary lights often used at roadworks and construction sites. In simple terms, the radio transmitters on each set of lights all talk to each other, in turn in the form of a data stream. Using sensors to trigger the transmission, the lights run in order to effectively manage multi-way traffic from all directions. When the lights detect interference, they quite cleverly switch to another preset frequency simultaneously and continue as normal. The sound you heard there was an example of auto cab media data terminals used by cab companies all over the world. Mainly found around VHF, auto cab is an example of a digital dispatch system or DDS for taxis and uses QPSK modulation. While many taxi companies still use voice transmissions, many have adopted automated data terminal systems where the dispatcher sends information about jobs to terminals in the cars. The drivers can then accept jobs get information and send information back to the dispatcher. These signals can be decoded using SDRs and certain software, but just come across as dataverse when received on a regular receiver. This signal is a TPMS, or Tire Pressure Monitoring System, more specifically Direct TPMS. It is a system that uses pressure sensors to monitor tyre pressures on vehicles. Tyre pressure monitoring systems are comprised of sensors that are designed to measure the tyre's pressure on a vehicle and then wisely transmit the data to a monitoring computer, which in turn alerts the driver that the tyre pressure is incorrectly set. Depending on how busy the area you're in, these signals are everywhere due to constant passing cars and they can be decoded on SDRs and the HackRF, which is quite a simple introduction into monitoring and decoding radio telemetry. This is a multi-tone paging signal developed by Multitone Electronics in the UK. The system uses coding similar to POXAG but the headers are different and will only work with Multitone's range of paging products. Multitone were actually pioneers in paging, inventing the world's first closed loop paging system at the St Thomas's Hospital in the UK in 1956. Nowadays they still have wide area paging coverage across the UK and serve the emergency services, the NHS and the Royal National Lifeboat Institute. The signals, like POXAG, can be decoded easily using an SDR and relevant software, and the data stream is almost constant. And finally, that last signal was DPMR, which is an open, non-proprietary radio system developed by Etsy, and supports both data and digital voice transmissions. DPMR is very similar to the NXDM protocol by Kenwood and Icon, and the main DPMR allocation in the UK and Europe is within 446 MHz, 
using license exempt handsets and although it's less widely used than DMR it has a really good clear transmission and audio quality and it can be used for commercial and private use. DPMR can be decoded using SDR software as well as some digital scanners such as the AOR DV1 and the DV10. However, like all of the signals we've covered off today, it'll only appear as a strange noise when listening on a regular analogue scanner. So I hope you enjoy this look at some of these strange and weird signals you'll hear on your scanner. I hope it's provided you with some insight into what you're actually picking up. All of these seemingly awful noises actually provide a function for many types of communication system alongside regular FM voice. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, suggestions or questions, or you would like me to do another 10 strange signals you'll hear on a scanner, then let me know in the box below. And all that's left to say is 7-3. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.